Okay, I'm going to show you how to digitize your uh, fonts. First of all, I am going to bring in the artwork that I was working on for you, and we're going to digitize this font for it. Since I do not have, let's see, I'm going to get rid of the hoop so we don't have that to have to worry about because I'm just showing you how to digitize font. And what I'm going to be using is what they call the two-point tool. I noticed you clicked on it in your in your thing. It's called the, the digitize blocks tool. I'm going to click on that. And what this does, I'm going to enlarge this E here. It's called a two-point tool because you go from one side to the other. You kind of like a ladder. You have to do it like that. So I'm making the first part of the E and then I'm going to generate the stitches. I'm going to make these select that and make these as satin stitches. Yes, this is big. I've got it big so you can see it. I'm going to take off the auto split. So you can, Okay. So you would make these two first. Usually this is first, but I I just made this one first. And then we're going to make this one. And you go in the direction that you want the satin stitch to go. Whoops. Okay, come on, let's see. Reshape. Make this down a little bit smaller. Change that to satin. Okay. Got to click the satin stitch first so it'll make it. Okay, now go back to this. Then for something like this, that's just a simple. And it's this, whatever direction you go, that is the direction your satin stitch is going to go, just like that. Generate the stitches. Now, since this is exactly the same as this, all I'm going to do with this is copy and paste it and move it right down there. And this is a little bit taller than that one, so I'm going to fix that by moving it up. Now on your uh, program, I don't know if you have what they call a branching tool. Um, right over here is my branching tool, so if I just I mean, lock this in place. If I highlight the whole letter and hit this branching tool, it will connect that whole letter just like that. But if you do not have a branching tool, I'm going to uh, undo that. If you do not have a branching tool, you will see if I click on that and and check the reshape, it's going to show me that this is going to stitch, it's going to start here and end here. But in actuality, if we want this to stitch first, we want both of those to start and end right there. And then this, then this bar will sew second. We will change the start and end points there. So if you want, you want it to start here, and we want it to stop here. You would move your start and stop there. So when this sews, it's going to start here and in there. But we still have this one to do. It may, when it's generated, it may automatically go over there, but it may just do what is that one long stitch. It may do a jump stitch. So we would change the start and stop point. We'd move a star here and the end here. Whoops. In there and start here. So if I hit the player button, you will see. Oh, where'd my. Okay. You will see 
how that is stitching out. That's going to stitch first, then that's going to stitch. So it'll automatically change that. And then it'll go down and do that. And that. But if I do the um, branching, it's going to sew like this. It will automatically connect everything together. Now, when this is sewing, I noticed it's doing an outline stitch, then it's doing a zigzag stitch. I don't like that to do on the lettering because sometimes that outline stitch is going to stick out. So I'm going to go over here into my uh, stitch program, the uh, stitching effects. I'm going to change my underlay. I don't want an edge run. I want just a plain zigzag, and then I'll take that on. So then when this uh, stitches out, it's just going to have a zigzag. Uh, that's how you would connect those. Um, for the X, we'll do our two-point tool again, and this time, and this, the X is going to be very easy because you're going to do that. Then you're going to come over here and do this part. Let's go down. Then you're going to do, and see how I'm going down a little bit further? That way, that's going to sew over the top, and you're not going to have gaps in it. Then I'm going to join these two. Whoops, come back here, E. Then I'm going to join those two. I'm going to branch it, so it's going to be all one item. Then I'm going to duplicate it and do a mirror image. And there's our X. Now for C, this part's going to be done first. So we'll go back to our two-point tool. And then this, then my program will automatically join these, but we're going to see See, it's going to start and stop. We want to, whoops, I don't want to move the point. I want to move the stopping. We're going to put that stop right there. Then we're going to digitize the C part. And on mine, my left clicks are straight. My right clicks are curves. So I would make right clicks to curve all the way around the C. And then I hit a left click, left click. And then I generate my stitches. So when it sews, it's going to sew this first and then this. Then an E, you have to look at your design. So an E usually sews out just like this. But you don't want a gap in that E. So when I do E's or anything, I do this. I make it out just a little bit more. These are all right clicks. Then I'm going to do a left click left click, generate stitches. So when it sews, it's going to sew just like this. And for your L, your H will be basically the same kind of like you did for the X. You're going to do this top, this part, join them together, then copy and paste for the second side, and then add that. So you've seen the uh, the ease. Anything that's got the little doodads down here at the bottom, you can't make that as 
I'll show you what it looks like if you make it all as one. That's the way it's going to sew. That's not the, that's not the look you want, especially if you're going to do a, a large font. So we're going to do this. This is how we're going to do like an I, an L. You're going to, to do this. This is the direction you want the satin stitches to go. And that's the way that's going to be. Okay, I've done the C. Let's do a one that's going to have to have separate pieces. We're going to do the P. The, the zero is, is easy. The O, you just do the right and left clicks. So I know you're bringing in a true type font and when you click it, it's going to show just the outline. If you have a design like this one that I just made for you, you're going to have the lettering. It's easier just to bring in your lettering and uh, digitize it over the top and do it by hand. It comes out so much prettier when it sews out. And for your P, we're going to, it'd be just, this part is going to be just like the L. I'm going to move this point over a little bit. And then the P, we want that P to connect. So we're going to go over it a little bit. And then I'm going to connect these with my branching and that will automatically put that behind there. Uh, the T would be the basic same thing. Um, make it first. And then you do your crossover. I know you got your T. Um, the R, you would do it just like the P. You would do this part first, and then you go back and do this. The S, you would do this part, do this part, and then do this part. So it'll sew that, and then that, and that. Uh, I hope that kind of helps you uh, understand how to do your uh, your fonts. Now, like an R, uh, a capital R, um, I'm going to bring in a capital R and let you see an R and what else would be a B. You can see here how this how this is made. You're gonna have you're gonna make this part separate, and it doesn't matter if you start from this way and go around this direction or start this direction and go around. But it will sew and connect here. For your B, you can't do it all at once. You have to do it in segments. You can either just do this part and then do these parts. But here again, you can do it all at once. Um, where's my tool here? 
I'm going to do this. I'm going to change to red. You would do your this part. And these are all le uh, right clicks, which is round. This one is a straight click. This one's straight, 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 then curve. The more you can get into the little curves here and stuff, it makes it sew out a little bit smoother. And there's your B. I'm going to bring in, open, okay. This is your design that I had digitized yesterday. And I'm going to hit the play button and let it show you how it's going to sew out. I'm going to speed it up just a little bit. Because I want you to see how the, the font is going to sew. Because I did hand do the font. Whoops. I can't do that while I'm typing to your wife. Okay, let's try this again. I'm going to go to the next one. I'm going to slow that down so you can see Because I do have a full digitizing program, it will automatically generate the correct way to put in the, the, the stitching. That's why I was telling your wife maybe you need to upgrade to the version 3 and that should give you the full capabilities of digitizing and it would give you more fonts. Uh, uh, your program takes the BX fonts and I, I looked on uh, Etsy and you can buy a, you know different fonts in a BX font and you can automatically uh, you can install it to your program and just type out the lettering and it will automatically come up digitized properly for your uh, program. Now the font down here I did not digitize. This was one of my built-in fonts. But see you can see that they all sew out the same way. It's because the way I've digitized it is the way they would digitize it. I've probably got 300 different fonts, but it never fails. Every time I get a, a new design to do, they're made like this one. I do not have this font, so I had to, to digitize it. But I wish you luck. It, uh, digitizing takes a lot of patience and a lot of practice and time. I've been doing this uh, my own uh, my own business for. 12 years and before that I worked at a company and I did it for about three or four years there and I did not have a program that was this up to date. So that is how that font and your design is going to sew out. I hope this has helped. If you have any questions, please do not hesitate to contact me. Bye-bye.